<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about A24. You know, in a world where we have Avengers movies and so many of these superhero movies coming out, it's cool to have a studio like A24 that does distribute movies like these yes. to a wider audience. They do a great job of working with streaming services and getting their films in the public attention. Mostly it's Amazon. Um, most of these films that I've seen, which I've seen all 32 of the movies we're talking about today. Um, Jory, how many of them have you seen? I have seen nine. He's seen nine of 32? Probably like six. 17 to 20, around I that. I think we had around 20. We yeah. were counting earlier. And then... Uh, yeah, I got 10. 10, okay. Right. So we've got a diverse panel here of people that have seen some of these movies and have seen all of these movies. The first match up here, uh, Moonlight and Under the Skin. I actually did see Moonlight. That is one of my nine. All right. Um, and Under the Skin. I didn't finish Under the Skin, though. Oh, okay. I don't think that it was for me. I remember not getting it. And I feel like, I don't know, there's nothing wrong with that. I feel like I'm not the best person to judge it because of that, though, because I didn't stick it out to the end. But yeah, as somebody who's never seen either of these movies, I think historically, probably Moonlight, I could see getting ahead in this. Interesting. I don't know, I do tend to see more love for Under the Skin whenever I hear these movies being talked about. But Under the Skin, I still hear people <laughs> raving about that it's one of the best science fiction movies of the past decade, which mm. we have a couple movies on here that could be can up and considered for that. My take here is Under the Skin is the better of the two movies, mm -hmm. um, but it's only because of the boundaries that Under the Skin is pushing. Moonlight, on the other hand, I do respect the, the praise that it has gotten, especially from the Academy. I think it was a very bold choice for the Academy to pick. I was one surprised it was nominated the year mm -hmm. it won. And then I was even more surprised when it beat La La Land for best picture. I was picture. about to say, I think yeah. we all assumed La La Land was going to win best picture. It seemed like yeah. exactly what the Academy <laughs> looks for in yeah. a best the picture thing, winner. The fact that these two movies are going head to head this early is Speaks crazy. volumes about the it's rest of the list. It's crazy to me. However, if there's Speaks a Speaks volumes of A24 as a whole. I think between the two, I would give it to Under the Skin. I think I would still go with Moonlight, just from a um, historical stance. I feel like um, in any film history class, I think that movie would be played more than um, Under the Skin. I'm going to have to say Moonlight. I, think, I know a lot more about the movie. I, I respect that. Yeah. I think Moonlight's probably the average viewer's choice as well. I think that's mm -hmm. actually probably the more accessible of the two films. We've got The Last Black Man in San Francisco, which just came out last year in 2019, versus 2017's A Ghost Story. Okay. Um, who here has seen A Ghost Story? All right, me and Josh. <laughs> okay. Um, I think, personally, A Ghost Story is one of the most emotional movie experiences I've actually ever had. I think really set the bar for what A24 was willing to uh, push creatively in terms of what can go into theaters. I honestly think A Ghost Story walked so the lighthouse could run without barely any dialogue. There's probably six scenes in this movie that actually have a conversation, and most of it is just through showing. I think this is a movie that anyone who aspires to make movies or aspires to shoot video in general should watch this movie because of the... Just the, the way it decided to tell its story in a very respectful and tasteful way. I think, like, this movie, at least in the last decade, has honestly handled ghosts and paranormal, those type of themes... In such a brilliant way, I don't think any other movie, at least recently, has done that. Where it doesn't feel, um, you know, we've had so many horror movies like Paranormal Activity, and I think that kind of puts a bad rap in like just ghost movies in general. But I think this one like was able to really get me invested in the, in that type of theming. I think a ghost story is a masterpiece that will be talked about 15, 20 years down the line. Absolutely. So, ghost stories moving on to the next round. Enemy, with Jake Gyllenhaal, up against Waves, which also came out this past year. Probably not too many of us have seen. Essentially, Waves is what Moonlight should have been, and I'm surprised it didn't get any more recognition than it did this year. Just the amount of characters that kind of touched this individual's life, 
and then you follow their stories as well. It feels almost like if Crash was made by someone who had lived the life of the characters in Crash. And because of that, I thought Waves was one of those movies that was going to make a huge impact this year when the Oscars hit. And it didn't even get a single nomination. And because of that, I think Waves has to move on to at least the next round. We're moving on to The Killing of a Sacred Deer versus... This year's biggest hit for May 24, Uncut Gems. I have not seen Uncut Gems, but Kevin Garnett is like my favorite athlete ever. <laughs> so just by that standpoint, I think it should move on. All right, Uncut Gems <laughs> is moving on. Hereditary against mm. Spring Breakers. Spring Breakers is one of my nine. Have you seen Hereditary? <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right, what's winning? Hereditary. Okay. I feel very... Yeah. Even though I've only seen Spring Breakers, I feel very comfortable saying Hereditary. I did not enjoy Spring Breakers. Sure. We're going to be moving on to another film by Ari Aster, uh, Midsummer Up Against 8th Grade. We're going to have to talk more about Midsummer later, but I think it needs to move on over 8th Grade. A great yeah. coming-of-age story, but not as good as other coming-of-age stories that A24 has distributed. To Disaster Artist Up Against Mid-90s. I've only saw, seen Disaster Artist. We'll all saw Mid-90s. I have not. Only Nate. <laughs> only Nate. I'm the only one who saw mid nineties. It's on Amazon. Guys, <laughs> A24. Nate, is nobody watches Amazon. Nobody <laughs> likes the boys except for you. A uh, kid who doesn't really fit in decides to become a skater in the height of. He was a skater boy. I said, see you later, boy. James Franco does a really funny Tommy Wiseau impression for the duration of the disaster artist. He plays it straight, which is very Yes, bold. he does, and he won the Golden Globe for it, and therefore... I honestly was surprised he didn't win the Oscar. My biggest complaint with it is pretty substantial, and it's the gratuitous celebrity cameos that they decided to fill it up with. You mean and Judd Apatow showing up as an influential producer in a fucking diner isn't cool to you? No. Believe it or not, I'm willing to say Disaster Artist should move on to the next round over mid-90s, <laughs> is between Room and Florida Project. Room was my like my second favorite movie for two years after it came out. We really like um, Willem Dafoe's Lobster. But he did... <laughs> He did win, I believe, for a supporting actor in I believe the Florida right. Project. Jacob Tremblay won a Golden Globe for his performance in this movie. I have not seen anything else with him in it that I have liked his performance. Room's moving on. We got <laughs> Ex Machina versus Locke. Ex Machina, my favorite sci-fi movie of the decade. Ex Machina's gonna just move on to the next round. We got First Reformed up against the Spectacular Now between me oh, and... Oh, shit. Ten. What? I actually saw The Spectacular Now. <laughs> Wait, what? I saw The Spectacular Now. And you like it? I thought it was okay. The <laughs> Spectacular Now is moving on. Cool. All right, we got Swiss Army Man up against Krisha. Definitely moving Swiss on. Swiss Army Man's moving on <laughs> yeah. for the cast alone. Paul Dano is extremely charismatic in the film. We've got Free Fire versus Good Time. Robert Pattinson's performance <laughs> in Good Time is untouchable the way this movie got builds snubbed suspense, hard the way this movie builds suspense i have not seen in a movie that isn't a horror film we've got ladybird up go. against it comes at night <sighs> um it comes at night was probably my favorite film of 2016 ladybird was, was my favorite film of 2017 what i can say about ladybird is i have a sister who's about to graduate high school <laughs> And going into college, I want, I literally want to show her Lady Bird, because I think that movie is very important to show a person that's about to make that transition. And as somebody who was raised in a Catholic school, they got that perspective really well done, and I found it very relatable. You I mean, it's called be. It Comes at Night. Right. <laughs> but what it is, is paranoia, and yes. what comes at night is the fear of the people that live in your house. Mm -hmm. And what this movie represents is the refugee and the immigration crisis in America in a way that is extremely relevant and no one wants to talk about it. I have not seen anyone talk about It Comes at Night in a way that is beyond, hey, A24 or a bunch of scums that advertise this movie as a horror <laughs> film and it's really just a really slow burn psychological thriller. There's no character in that movie that I was really able to gravitate towards. Alden, take it away. <laughs> say Lady Bird. Having seen neither of these movies, 
I would say I have to agree with Josh based on the interpretation that I've been given. All right, we're moving on. <laughs> Sorry we had to leave It Comes at Night back with the disaster art. <laughs> with Tusk. <laughs> oh, no. The Witch up against Green Room. You really knocked it out of the park with The Lighthouse. As much as I like The Witch, I don't... I just don't see it getting far in this tournament compared to other movies. I think it's a pretty good horror movie. Really suspenseful, but I don't think it's good, really gonna compare to the other films we have talked about. It's just kind of there. I think Anton Yelchin gave his last great performance in Green Room. Uh, mm. Rest in peace. I really did want to see Green Room. Like, um, it's on Amazon Prime, actually. Believe it or not. <laughs> hey, guess what? If I'm talking about a movie on this list that you really think you should watch, guess what? It's <laughs> most likely on Amazon Prime. Y you know, you can compare this movie to something like Saw. I mean, it's really that graphically violent, but very rarely in a movie like that do you see someone get, like, full-on revenge, turn from being this kind of timid, recluse, to full-on badass. I think the cultural impact of The Witch far surpasses Green Room in Fabric, which is the most forgettable A24 movie I've ever seen, up against The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse we is know, moving we on. Know. We'll talk about it later. All Love right. Lobster. <laughs> Speaking of lobster, the next movie is The Lobster. They're up against The Farewell. I think The Farewell is just... It's one of the best family ensemble cast I think I've seen in a film in a while. Yeah, talk about The Farewell, the most slept on movie of last year. Absolutely. It was my favorite I movie of... I was very uh, surprised I didn't yeah. see it. It was my favorite movie of 2019. We both saw it. We both yeah. loved it. We saw it like the same week as um, Ready or Not. We saw two really yeah. good family movies in two different ways. In the same theater, too. <laughs> yeah, which, which is, is not a normal theater. And um, then overall, I think The Farewell just had a really interesting story and a really positive story. And I feel like we just don't get a lot of positive stories anymore. I like a really good feel-good story sometimes. The presentation was very mature, but it, you could watch it with anyone. No one's going to get offended by watching The Farewell. Yeah, I, I adore this movie. Yeah, um, I think The Farewell is moving on. Well, I agree. we're moving on to the next round. But this like round is going to be a speed round. I'm going to count down. Three, two, one. You have to say... Okay. Which of the two movies should win? The first matchup of round two Fight. is Moonlight versus a ghost story. Three, <laughs> two, one. A, a ghost, ghost story. story. Uh, we got Waves up against Uncut Gems. Three, two, one. Waves. Uncut Gems. Kevin Garnett. <laughs> Uncut Gems will be moving on. This is one that actually needs debate. We're talking Hereditary versus <laughs> Midsummer. This is honestly a question I have been asking myself for the past year. Well, I think Hereditary has a better main character and a better mm. overall cast. Interesting. Hereditary does? Yes. Uh, uh, Midsummer. I'm going to hard disagree on that. The last half hour, the main character of Midsummer is just staring blankly. Because she's fully succumbed to the yes. cult. I, I think I genuinely prefer Midsummer, um, not based on the content, but more based on the visuals. Overall, do you prefer a better, well con well constructed story or a better, well constructed performance from Tony Collette's performance in Hereditary is one of the best performances put to screen in the past decade. I think Midsummer probably has a better ending than Hereditary. Hereditary is just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Hereditary's got an ending and a half. Judgment call, Nate. <sighs> All right, can we do the speed round thing? All four of us, ready? Okay. One, two, three. Midsummer. All right, so we've got Disaster <laughs> Artist up against Room. One, <laughs> two, three. Disaster room. Artist. I'm sorry, I can't even with the straight. It's Room. <laughs> It okay. is room. <laughs> but Disaster Artist is a movie that's entirely centered around the making of a movie called The Room. And <laughs> that is kind of wild. <laughs> We've got Ex Machina up against Spectacular Now. Oh my god. <laughs> do we even have to do a speed round one, on this one? One, two, three. Ex, Ex Machina. Machina. <laughs> we got Swiss Army Man up against Good Time. Three, two, one. Good, good time. Good time. We got Lady Bird up against The Witch. Three, two, one. Lady Bird. Okay, that was that was exactly what I expected to happen. The Lighthouse up against the Farewell. Three, two, one. The, the Lighthouse. 
I heard two farewells and two lighthouses, so this is the perfect uh, opportunity to debate. But I do think the farewell does deserve a lot of credit and a lot more recognition than it does. I think the lighthouse has gotten a lot of praise, even though it wasn't nominated. And I think the farewell just needs that same amount of recognition. It's split yeah. between three or four countries, and they all get together. And I still felt relatable yeah. to that family, even mm -hmm. though they live in a totally different country from me. And I think that takes a... Uh, that really says a lot about the script. The Lighthouse was two other movies that I really enjoyed that I have seen on this list. Uh, Under the Skin and The Witch. It seems like the best parts of those movies working on all cylinders. Like, even the more esoteric stuff from Under the Skin that doesn't really come across, that just comes off as like, this is just straight up bizarre and I'm struggling to like connect any meaning towards this. In the later parts of The Lighthouse, where it starts to get really surreal because they've been on this island for god knows how long stuck with each other drinking lighthouse oil <laughs> i still feel like the lighthouse manages to be one of the most unique movies even among those on this list where we have movies like ex machina midsummer hereditary and all this stuff coming up the lighthouse still manages to stand up and not just because it's one of the newer ones <laughs> I do think that the lighthouse pushes the medium that is film forward in a way far beyond what the farewell does. Definitely. And I yeah. think what the farewell does is really give us really believable characters and really believable story. And uh, uh, honestly, there's moments in this movie where you feel like laughing and there's moments in this movie where you feel like crying. Hmm. I'm going to have to give it to The Lighthouse, even though they're both fantastic films. Watch them both. A Ghost Story and Uncut Gems. Three, two, one. A I Ghost Story. <laughs> as much as I like Kevin Garnett, A Ghost Story is just really good. All right. Uncut Gems, a phenomenal film. A gem. A Ghost the... Story I... moves on to the final four. Up next, we've got Midsummer up against Room. Uh, three, <clears throat> two, one. Midsummer. Midsummer. Was that unanimous? It sounds like it. Did it sounds you like... say Midsummer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Midsummer is moving on. We've got Ex Machina versus <laughs> Good Time. Three, two, one. Ex good Machina. Time. I don't see a reason why Good Time needs to move on when Ex Machina, I think, is one of the best sci fi films made in this decade. I do agree it's up there as the best, but as, like, personally, I. I put interstellar above it. i'll give you the best reason why good time should move on because of all the critical acclaim that the safety brothers are receiving for uncut <laughs> gems every single positive thing that has been said about their direction about their style about their cleverness about their writing i think good time is without a doubt the best movie they've made i also think it's robert pattinson's best performance to date as soon as <laughs> the ai like just says hey maybe you shouldn't trust this guy he 100 percent does not trust him despite yeah. having only met her once it think, wasn't in their first meeting i think in an era of like catfishing and online relationships i think like we're going towards more of a future like this which is kind of kind of frightening for fucking simps like donald gleason's character that is portrayed better and under the skin than ex machina but we voted that one off already and we're talking about ex machina like it's a masterpiece when it's really like b tier sci-fi i feel like blade runner is like the whole world is like this but i feel like ex machina is more of like a this is the first album. yeah like oh, oscar yeah. isak is kind of like this is like this the, is the yeah. first of what would become yeah. Oscar Isaac's kind of like, he's kind of like the Steve Jobs of this, like, he, the movie that is moving on is Good Time. Lady Bird up against The Lighthouse. Three, two, one. The Lighthouse. Lighthouse. Looks like we're not debating. Wow. Alright, so here we are, the final four of our bracket. We got a ghost story up in the top left quadrant, we've got Midsummer in the bottom left, and we've got Good Time in the top right, and The Lighthouse in the bottom right. I think all of these films actually represent an extreme of what A24 is willing to put out there. As much as I like Midsummer, I feel like a ghost story really does deserve to be in the finals, because I feel like it's just one of the most... Personally, I think it's one of the most overlooked movies of the last decade. I think this just has a really interesting take on 
ghost, paranormal, afterlife, whatever you want to describe it. But uh, Ghost Story is like an hour and a half. Like, that is not a burden to sit through. The main character of this movie, then this movie is probably not going to resonate with you emotionally. Yeah. And because of that, I feel like Midsummer is really uh, incredibly powerful and incredibly moving to a specific person. But I also feel like it can alienate a lot of people in a way that a ghost story, if you're willing to suspend your disbelief, and you're willing to watch a movie with uh, this kind of weird aspect ratio. If you're willing to look yeah. past those things, I think a ghost story will touch every single person who watches it. Well, soul. a ghost story, I feel like, can re- can be relatable to everybody because I feel like there's always one thing that's holding everybody back. Ghost story is moving on. <laughs> In the right side of the bracket, we've got Good Time up against The Lighthouse. It's like, the baseball scene in Twilight that happened. Like, this guy's gonna be Batman. Yeah, I think just based on creativity, uh, character performance, I think the lighthouse just, just by far moves on to the finals for me. For the lighthouse as pushing the medium forward. Yeah. Um, not to say that Good Time hasn't done it. Based on what you're saying, it sounds like it's doing unique things in its own right. All right. So our final two. So it sounds like our final two of what A24 has distributed is between a ghost story and the lighthouse. A ghost story is just one of those films that affected me so much more than The Lighthouse. The Lighthouse, I kind of just left like, well, that was a really good movie with some really good performances. A ghost story left me with a lot of questions, not only about the film itself, but just about other themes that goes beyond the movie. And I think I really have to give a ghost story a lot of credit when it comes to that audio elements of the lighthouse really kind of made it stand out these natural sounding elements to this rugged environment in which these these characters were acting and in which these people were living i think the lighthouse is probably the best made movie that a24 has ever distributed i'm completely fine going with ghost story on that one what i could say out of this entire tournament is that if you haven't checked out a ghost story i would really do i'm gonna have to agree So, Jory Alden, I hope you guys watch a ghost story. Well, thank you everyone for watching this very long-winded debate into the best and, uh, I guess, the worst of A24's uh, filmography today. Yeah, have fun editing this. No, no.